gets cramped here with two people. Jeez. No, come back, come back. Oh, it's lonely with one. <laughs> so the duo is back. We got Cos yeah, back, back from back. exams, back from the torture that is life. Yeah, life. And back to talk about the Premier League, right? Of course. No, 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 we're not talking about the Premier League. No, I cover enough of the EPL with my bit. If anyone cares about it more, ask for it. So we've decided to go into something that's close to our hearts, you know, the, the yes. World Cup. The World the Cup. World Cup. Yep. I'm a bit devastated, but anyway. Yeah, look, we've got a dual, dual World Cup citizenship, you could call it. I've got uh, two stakes who have both made it in, fortunately for me. Yeah, I've got Australia. Oh. Yeah, we've got Australia. It's, it's a, but look, um, for, for reasons that we'll go into, probably more attached to one of those countries than the other. Many people don't understand what it is about the World Cup that that's so exciting and so, and you know you look at it and you're like oh this is a bunch of idiots why are you getting so hyped up about it the World Cup and of course when we talk about the World Cup this isn't the Rugby World Cup this is not no. the Cricket World Cup no. not the Hockey World Cup FIFA World Football, Cup. Football, soccer, this is the World Cup. This is the true World Cup. So why we love the World Cup? A bunch of cultures from all around the world coming together to celebrate a, an event. Beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And the beauty of these mixed cultures is, I mean, everyone tends to sort of, they want to put their country on the map. Like, that's what with, with the World Cup. That, that, that's, that's, that's what the World Cup does. It puts your country on the map. Everyone... It fuels national pride. Yeah, that's what it does. Exactly. It's the fact that your country's there and they're representing you, really, as a person, because you don't get to choose where you're born. You don't get to choose what country you're born into. And... Or your cultural upbringing. Or I think, cultural I think that's, the that's the key thing. That's the key thing. It doesn't really matter where you're born. I mean, especially like with the, the countries like the UK, it's very multicultural, but ultimately it comes to the upbringing. You know, that's that's what stirs up the pride, you know? Yeah. And and when like, that is generally the, the fuel behind each of these teams in the it World is. Cup, and that just, it just gives you this, uh, I don't know if it's, if it's real. I don't know what is real they, anymore. They represent you, really, exactly. as a person. Yeah. Your culture, your upbringing, that's what it's about. It's very different to club football because with club football, you either choose your club because your dad goes for that team or you're in your family. Which technically could be, you know... Which could be, but it's not really... <laughs> you brought you can, into it. You can sort of defect from that as yeah. well. And you could choose your club because of, of a player that you love growing up. So for those sorts of reasons. But with culture, it's just different. Yeah, you, just, you, you, you can't, can't abandon them without serious serious consequences much, yeah. <laughs> now look the fifa world cup hasn't been without its fair share of controversial circumstances and things like that but ultimately it breaks down tons of barriers uh, socio-economic barriers uh, what better way to encapsulate it than with a quote tim vickery who's a rio-based journalist football is a universal language that we speak with many different accents beautiful beautiful stuff another one here we go um the biggest patriotic act that most people engaging cheering on their team during the world cup reaches people who have no interest in football otherwise it reaches them at a profound level because it is their country it is their people being represented in the eyes of the rest of the world and yeah. that rings ridiculously true for poland generally like the guys are into it all the time but but the girls when it comes to the world cup they're just all over it right behind their team because it's it's the nation it's it's not it's not the it's not the team yeah, it's not the players it's the nation it's the nation being it, it's what we sort of touched on earlier it, and he, he said it perfectly it's your yeah, they're representing yourself they're representing your culture your, your nation your, your country is on show to the world that's what it's about and it's that pride that, that it fuels <laughs> what, what is it, it? What is it? <laughs> and another quote the quote is you don't have to be the biggest you don't have to be the fastest, the tallest, or the strongest to play soccer or football. It's an every man's game. And a lot of people can relate to it in that sense. So beautiful. That was uh, Carlos Bocanegra, uh, yeah. an American defender. This was before the 2010 World Cup, by the way. And 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 it just the contrast, I mean, you've got other World Cups. You know, you've got your, your rugby World Cups. You've got, you've got the Olympics as well. Um, and, and of course, cricket, the World Cup. Yep. That, that's, I can't think of too many sports that actually have World Cups, but um, hockey, I think, has one too. But the point is, in, in a lot of these sports, maybe maybe hockey aside, it, it's it's very 
like physicality and and physical prowess gives you uh, enough of an upper hand that you, you can especially rugby well, if, the bigger you are <laughs> yeah. you're in you know yeah. uh, depending on the sport exactly yeah. in, in soccer there's access for everyone also it's a team sport as well it's that, a team that sport well. but it's a game where physicality helps if you're strong physically yeah. like it, obviously it helps and you fit but, and all that but um, <laughs> it's not the determining it's, factor it's not because there's you can be strong tactically you yeah. know? You can be strong, you've got to be strong mentally as well some of the best players in the world Messi's Messi, yeah, he's he one of the smallest is, players, but technically brilliant, and yeah. that's what soccer's about. It's uh, and you do have big guys that, that play as well. You know, you got mm. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He did retire, but oh, he, he, he might oh, come. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Might, he might come. True. back. he might come back. True, sure. it's Zlatan. He's, it's Zlatan. He, he, normal rules don't apply to him. <laughs> Now there's a lot to unpack with the World Cup, and we'll, we'll try not to sort of incorporate soccer as a whole into this thing because that, that that's just that's even bigger. Yeah. But over the next few weeks, leading into the World Cup, we're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, certain aspects yeah, of the World cool. Cup, which yeah. uh, some of you may not be aware of, um, and of course, the we'll, we'll talk a bit about you know the teams that missed out that were expecting to make it in, and the teams that got in that weren't expecting yeah. to make it in. Mm. There's there's some uh, there's always good and good and hard luck stories yeah. with every every tournament. Truth be told, the World Cup, really in terms of winning it. It's underdeveloped in a lot of countries, in a lot of yeah. continents. Although the, the gap is getting the gap is getting small uh, as these teams get better. But at, at this stage, only European and South American teams have won it, and in fact, only European and South American teams have made the final. Yeah. So, um, but of course, South Korea made that semi-final not that long ago. Yeah, you did get the 2002. You did get the smoke. We're getting old because it's four years. Yeah, four years. It's a long time. Four, and, years, four years older makes a difference. And it all it takes is one game that, yeah. that knocks you out, and, and and maybe that makes it that that spectacle as well because you know it, it all comes down to one game and stuff like one that. One game, one moment, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, Australia and Italy have had a, a was before they they did not. They could not care less about each other, you could say. But after yeah. 2006 World Cup, uh, it's just it's going to be forever instilled as if it's some sort of deep-lying 200-year-old rivalry or something like yeah, it that. Is. It's a massive rivalry. But it's not. It's half the Australian team are Italian. Uh, well, yeah, they got Italian cup, heritage. Yeah, yeah, Italian heritage. In that, so. Even that team that played in that game. But, yeah, yeah, so uh, <laughs> uh, you get stuff like that happening, and but um. That, that, that doesn't exist, you know, without the World Cup. You, you don't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, no other sport, no, not not the Olympics, not the Rugby World Cup, not the Cricket World Cup. Uh, not, none of it creates this this rivalry that is created by or n- not rivalry, but this 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 intense national. It's pride. national pride, yeah. That's and what it's it not even like patriotic. It's not like you know our, our country, everyone else is bad. It's just like this is. You it's, represent it, us. Yeah, that's what it's about. That's, that's exactly what it is. It gives people a voice, you know? And and to, the countries that generally do well, they feel it too. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. we could run a few clips of, you know, uh, teams like Buffon as well after that. Yeah. After Italy got yeah. knocked out of the... The running for the World Cup this for the first time in 60 years. 60 years. I mean, you, you could feel the emotion in his voice. You could see the emotion in him. And it's it's just something because they know that they're carrying the weight of the nation on their shoulders and yeah, their backs. It, they are, especially well, especially for Italy because <laughs> that club that why do I keep saying club for? <laughs> they especially for Italy because that nation has a lot of pressure on them because with four World Cup wins in its history, they've got a lot of pressure to perform well. And there's and, not there's not really much else going for them at the moment. So. Well, there's not really ever much else going for them in the sporting world. They're very sport. good at volleyball. Oh, uh, they no, they play but not recently. Man. Poland also has a good not, volleyball not, team. Not recently. No, recently they've still been good. Yeah, well, They're still in the top. Uh, but, no, but I don't think volleyball quite football. creates the emotion no. that uh, it's, yeah, it's football, deeply football, ingrained football, culture. Their sport, yeah. Deeply <laughs> ingrained into the culture. So as the weeks go by, we're going to talk about a few different things. We'll talk about the, the teams that didn't make it, the yep. teams that did make it, uh, the different qualifying groups because there's a bit yeah, of... Yeah, within the regions. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of variety there, especially with some confederations not really having enough teams to have more than one stage in them. Yeah. South America. North America. CONCACAF. Yeah, yeah, yeah. CONCACAF. Is that, is that... Yeah, it's a... Con the ball. Con my ball. That's South America. CONCACAF is North America. We'll get into that acronym. We'll unwind yeah. it 
unwrap it yeah. at some stage. There's a whole bunch of cultures that we, we, we've been through a little bit with, mm. with, the, with the different types that they involve. You know, you've got the South American, yeah. tons of different European cultures, African culture, Asian, East yeah. Asian culture. You've got the, the Anglo countries, you know, you've got Australia, um, yeah. England, England the US. UK, US. Well, but the US aren't there. They're still part of the qualifying process. Yeah. And of course, New Zealand, don't forget New Zealand, good effort, but you know, Better like next Always four years. Tough, yeah. yeah. Come join Asia. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there are reasons beyond patriotism to, to go for the World Cup that, that make it great to yeah. watch. It is less of an appeal, of course. Of course, for the, the American watchers, um, you'll need something else to latch onto, and don't worry, we'll find plenty for you. Also, if anything particularly interesting happens in terms of the World Cup, mm-hmm. we'll. I will be covering we'll it. We'll cover it. We'll cover yeah, it. Right. We're, we're going we're gonna to try and be a bit more. Uh, in the moment if you don't have something to do during the world cup by the end of this then we've failed and we're not going to let that happen right no, it's, no, it's... We're not. so definitely keep tabs on these world cup videos plenty to cover plenty to do uh, best way to do that is to subscribe of course if yeah. you haven't already done so and uh keep tabs on our facebook page we'll have all the details there the link to that is in the description below also we're going to be having some articles written yes. up for the uh, for the for the Tumblr, which is also in the description below. The Cosme Bulletin. Cosme Bulletin is uh, officially starting quite soon. Yeah, it's quite soon. We, we don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, we we were going to, to do a video on on some other satire, but we, instead we're going to do this. Um, I said that that's the thing that was meant to be about Arsenal. I'm sorry, I got carried away. I announced it, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But it wasn't going to be funny. This is better. I'll still be doing the weekly match day reality checks for the EPL. Cos is yet to find his calling, but if he comes up with something, then he'll have something for you as well. Do all those things we just told you to do, and we'll see you sometime soon. Don't rely on me. <laughs> but um, thanks for watching, and either way, we'll see you next time. See you later.